okay, I'll tell, tell you about this. Uh, LeBron James. Yeah. Going to L.A. I gotta say, with the Ball family, that cannot possibly be as glamorous as it once was. I And I know the Lakers, you know, of course, what have the Lakers done in the last, what, 20 years or so? I mean, really, you know, they... But the other question here is, I guess, no, beginning, start of the decade, Phil Jackson, you know, Kobe and all this, forgive me. You know, like I said, not much of an NBA fan, to be brutally honest with you. However, with that circus, oh, they'll sign new free agents. I know that the Lakers, the Lakers actually have more Facebook likes than any other American or Canadian professional sports franchise. And that's saying something. LeBron has two million more than that. So wherever he hangs his hat becomes glamour. And and that's interesting. I mean, right there. Uh, because I can see that circuit. He's the big fish in the small pond. He's the hometown hero in Cleveland. And uh, But I will say this. Uh, you can talk about all the charity you want. You can talk about... I don't know, you know, coming back to Cleveland. If he leaves a second time, uh, Mike Trevisano calling him Judas all the time, that will be what he has felt like to many in the Sixth City. There's an archaic reference to Cleveland. The Sixth City. You see, once upon a time, Cleveland was the sixth largest city in the United States. Who knows that? Why, it's me, Mark E. Bilson, your voice of choice for a new generation of Tri-City Sports fans. Name of the program, Tri-City Sports. Now you know what we do. We own the Tri-Cities with the hardest-hitting opinions and the best guests in the market. Today's show, we have uh, three really big guests. Our old friend Jerry Bonkowski is going to the race in Chicagoland. He's going to talk NASCAR at 1 p.m. with us. Then at 1.15, Chrissy Martin. Haven't had her on in a while. You can watch our first interview with her on YouTube. But she's putting on a fight card with two local fighters. Of course, Martin herself, what, 22 years ago, I believe became the first Tricidian to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Uh, originally from West Virginia, but trained out of Bristol for a long time. Now lives, I believe, in Orlando, but she's giving a couple of local fighters an opportunity, and I do want to talk about that. You know, the area has a very underrated boxing, uh, boxing uh, card, if you will. That's not a what I'm trying to say. Uh, boxing scene. Scotty Vance has always done a good job uh, promoting the sport. Got city money for the sport once upon a time. Johnson City money. Uh, and then finally, uh, my old friend Jay Santos comes on, 1.30. ETSU has signed a broadcasting deal worth $15 million. You heard me, $15 million. And he'll be on in the next hour as well. But you can never go wrong talking about University of Tennessee sports in East Tennessee. You should talk more about Virginia Tech. Well, we probably should. But, yeah. It's sort of like, uh, you know, uh, Tennessee, we are in Tennessee. We are. I, I once remember, uh, used to make the trip from Western North Carolina to East Tennessee with great regularity. And I remember just how, in, as soon as you got in North Carolina, shoom, or excuse me, the uh, as soon as you left North Carolina, it was shoom, all vols. That's not that's not that big of a surprise and all that. But in North Carolina, there was more of a competition for the fan dollar between North Carolina and North Carolina State. Traditionally, all the white collar people rooted for North Carolina. All the Blue-collar people rooted for NC State. I haven't lived in North Carolina in quite some time. But uh, at that time, uh, North Carolina State was considered the more prestigious program than Duke. So that does go back several, several years, almost a generation, if you will. In fact, it does go back a generation, now that I think about it. But yeah, nobody, I, I always say in North Carolina, nobody roots for Duke. It's like Vanderbilt here. I mean, it's a private school that recruits from all over the country. 
there you go. But can never go wrong with Vols News. And Knoxville News Sentinel reported yesterday uh, that Holly Warlock, she announced, you know what, looks like I'm going to get a contract extension, should be done in a couple of weeks, just uh, some legal matters to work out, everything ought to be on the up and up. It's overdue to give Holly Warlock a contract extension. It doesn't look good for the University of Tennessee to not give the living legend Holly Warlick, arguably the biggest legend on campus, and to treat her the way that they have. Yeah, Tennessee. I'm not talking necessarily fan base, although the fan base has not appreciated her either. Frankly, and I gotta say that I know a lot of people, well, you know, where Tennessee has won a national championship in her six years at the helm. Guess what? Pat Summits lasts four years at the helm. She didn't win a national championship. Guess what? While Pat Summit was the head coach of the Lady Vols, the Connecticut Huskies just went into the left lane and passed the Lady Vols basketball program by as if the Lady Vols carburetor had a restrictor plate on it. And that's not on Warlick. I'm not sure it's on Summit, although I do think her decision to stop playing Connecticut didn't help the program out at all. Regardless, if you want to compare Holly Warlick's record as head women's basketball coach to that of Pat Summit, in the 80s and 90s, you are a fool. You do not know what you're talking about. The game has changed a lot. You might as well be talking about the dead ball era in baseball or the single wing leather helmet era in football or the era in hockey where goalies didn't wear a mask and nobody tried to shoot a slap shot. You might as well be talking about those eras because that's the era that Pat Summit spent the vast majority of her coaching career in. More than half of Summit's coaching career was spent before Connecticut won their first national title. Think about this. Nine years of Pat Summit's coaching career Far more than 100 victories, I haven't counted them up, was spent not in the NCAA, but in the AIAW. All right? That's King Kelly playing barnstorming pro baseball for the Cincinnati Red Stockings before the formation of the National League in 1876. I'm not putting it down, but you cannot compare... Today's women's basketball, the pressures, the challenges, the competition, it's far, far, far greater in today's women's game than it was even 10 years ago when Summit won her last national title. Nobody, remember when the Lady Vols won the national title in 98? Maybe you do, maybe you're not old enough to remember. I do. Called it the greatest basketball team of all time on the women's hard court. Guess what? It's been surpassed a thousand times over by in these last 20 years. Maybe a thousand is a bit of an exaggeration, but you get the point that I'm making. Let me tell you this. Not only did more than half of Summit's coaching career take place in an era before Connecticut won their first national championship, 95 with Rebecca Lobo, but Summit's first national title appearance, okay, against Southern California, early 80s. You know the team Tennessee beat to get to that national final? Cheney State. It was an era there wasn't much money in college basketball, women's college basketball then. And yeah, a Cheney State could go and play in the Final Four, Cheney State. It's unfair to compare Warlick to that era. 
Here's what it is fair to compare her head coaching career to. The last four years of Pat Summit's career. Oh, and what's this I see? Gee, not all of those years had an NCAA tournament victory. All of Warlick's six years at the helm of the Lady Vols have not only included 20 victories, which is the standard for Tennessee, but an NCAA tournament victory as well. People want to get on. They lost at home last year. Yeah, to the number 12 team in the country. They weren't playing Tennessee Tech. When the NCAA tournament was in Knoxville, it was at the Stokely Center during Summit's career. She was beating Tennessee Tech, not Oregon State, the number 13 team, or was it 12, 12 or 13 team, depending on the poll, in the country. There's a little bit of a difference there. Now, it's understandable that there would be some legal issues with the Warlock contract, because coaching contracts today are worded so schools like Tennessee won't be burdened with massive buyouts like the $8 million the Vols still owed Butch Jones. Phil Fulmer, when he became the athletic director at UT, he did the same. He has a contract that has, I think, 21 different ways he can be fired for cause or something like this. Uh, John Curry didn't have that. Warlick's 60 years old. She's 60. She knows the criticisms she's faced, as unfair as many of those criticisms have been. Clearly, she wants to have a financial payout when her coaching career ends, be it by dismissal or retirement. She has earned it. Interesting column by John Adams, Knoxville News Sentinel, raised some serious questions if Tennessee is truly committed to winning in college basketball. I've stated repeatedly on Tri-City Sports Now, it is insulting that a coach of Warlick's caliber and success has been asked to coach with just one year left on her contract. For recruiting purposes, a coach of the Lady Vols program's prestige should have Four years, just as Jones and any major college football coach will have. Don Staley at South Carolina. How is South Carolina past UT in women's basketball? I'll tell you how. Her contract lasts until 2025. Player choosing between the game. The I get. They still the Lady Gamecocks. I know that sounds counterproductive. You know, counter to South Carolina. Okay, we'll just use that. USC, if you like. Anyway, at South Carolina, you want to know why South Carolina, I think, has surpassed Tennessee in SEC hierarchy? Yeah, it's because Tennessee is given their legendary coach in Warlick, who's only been with the program since 1974, who's only one of the greats in the history of the Lady Vols program playing, had was only by Summit's side on all of her national championships, that coach gets no room. She gets no extension. She gets no contract that allows her to go to recruits and say, oh yes, I will be your coach for four years. Don Staley has a contract that lasts until 20 25, and I guarantee you, South Carolina is going to keep four years in the future for every Staley contract extension that she signs. It's just needed in college athletics. Somehow, though, with the sword of Damocles over her head, Warlick brought in Prospect Nation's top recruiting class in all of women's college basketball to Knoxville last year. She's always won 20 games a season and always capped it off with at least one NCAA tournament victory. Playing against much easier competition, Summit's winning percentage as a head coach without Warlick assisting her as a player or coach, because Warlick was her first star and then was longtime assistant, you know what Pat Summit's winning percentage as a head coach was without some sort of Warlick influence? 702. Not bad. Oh, 
702. You wanted 7 out of 10 of your games? It's great. You know what Warlick's career winning percentage is in the six years she has been the head coach at Tennessee without Summit? 739. In other words, Warlick against much tougher competition wins more without Summit than Summit against much easier competition won without Holly Warlick. Yet Warlick makes almost a million and a half dollars less annually than Gino Ariama. And you're telling me that Tennessee is really giving Warlick equal resources with her competition to win at an elite level? She has not been given this. Pat Summit won six national championships before starting Lady Vols guard Evina Westbrook was even born. Since Westbrook was born, Ariema has won 10 national championships at Connecticut. We can legitimately ask if Tennessee is giving their women's program the resources that Connecticut gives their women's program. And you want Whatever coach you bring in, I don't care if you dig up John Wooden. You want that coach to win on that level, you're not giving them the resources. Now, a lot of people, they'll say, well, Tennessee basketball, it's a brand name, blah, 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 Pat Summit's legacy. Okay, if you're so high and mighty about Pat Summit's legacy, what would it mean for her legacy if Warlick's eventual successor was given more resources to succeed than Summit's longtime loyal assistant? Because to bring in a big name head coach in college women in women's college basketball, you're gonna have to pay that coach more than the 665K a year that Warlick has been making. What does it mean for Summit's legacy that her loyal assistant and star player hasn't been given the contemporary resources to succeed, yet puts up extraordinary results considering the hand she is dealt by her own administration? Frankly, Warlick has made the Summit legacy into the Lady Vols legacy. Players who stay for all four years, all of them graduate. They carry themselves with class on and off the court. That was a Summit trademark. It's a Warlick trademark. That means it's a Lady Vols trademark. That's pretty impressive. Vol for life. I'm so, I hate that. It is truly a phony piece of propaganda. I say it all the time. Is Lane Kiffin of all for life? What about Jones? How about Bruce Pearl on the Auburn sideline? Are these all Vols for life? Greatest living figure in the football program is John Majors. Was he a Vol for life when he was coaching Pitt or Iowa State or as assistant at Mississippi State? You tell me. But if anyone embodies Vol for life, it is Warlick who has been associated with the program since 1974 A.D. Summit never won a national championship without Warlick as an assistant, and Summit's record in the five years in the early 80s as compared to when Warlick was on the bench with her shows improvement to truly elite status that the Lady Vols did not have before Warlick came back to the program. Warlick deserves an extension. She deserves a long-term extension. She deserves to be basically, I don't want to say coach for life, because, yeah, I mean, conceivably what happens if, I don't know, Tennessee loses all their games next year. You know, whatever. Okay, I get that. But even if the Lady Vols lose every game next year and she's fired... With all she's done for Tennessee, she deserves whatever severance package the contract provides. It, she has unquestionably deserved it. You know what the only thing Warlick's done wrong? Her name isn't Pat Summit. But what some Lady Vols fans fail to see, you know, like I said, Majors, both the player and coach, Warlick, both the player and coach. And a lot of Lady Vols fans fail to see. With Warlick, her playing and coaching career, both as a head coach and an assistant, 
has made Warlick just as big of a legend as her predecessor was in Tennessee lore. I'm Marky Bilson, IO's Tri-City Sports Now. I've got even more Vols news for you coming up with, hey, Juan Jennings. Yeah, he's back with the team, but you know how he caught the biggest pass of his career? I'm going to tell you when we come back on Tri-City Sports Now. Right.